record button has been pushed. Thank you, Sean. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the April 20th uh, version of the weekly community call for chaos. I will drop the minutes in here one more time, just in case anybody needs them, please um, do us all a favor and add your name to the list of attendees if you like. Um, and I changed the top thing to say just one good thing going on in your life recently, if you want to share something good, just because there's bad stuff happening. So we just want to, I don't know, have something good to focus on for today. So just for today, um, feel free to share with everybody in the minutes there. We'd love to see what's happening in your world. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and jump on in um, to the agenda. The um, very first thing that we just wanted to bring up is I don't think Matt is here because I think he has class right now. So I'll just go ahead and mention um, that he has released, he, the DNI badging team has released version 2.0, they're calling it. Um, they uh, put a link in here to the, the release. You can see what was changed in that version. And they went ahead and tagged it um, just to make it official. So, um, and then you can also see there what uh, Matt and the team are working on for next time. Um, and this was the very first kind of iteration uh, uh, of that. And since the original inception, mm. this was the very first iteration on that. So it's really exciting to take stuff that they had learned and, and put it into practice. So congratulations to Matt and the team, even though he's not here. Um, you guys are doing a fantastic job. So does anyone have questions on that? Maybe I'll just make a comment. I think some of this also, some of the version two came about as we as reviewers and the review team learn kind of the questions that can be asked. So we were having some challenges around demographics and the posting of demographics, just like asking an event whether or not they've posted demographics. So obviously there's some challenges inside of there. So we're learning as we're going to. Mm -hmm. I would be interested to hear what you've learned, maybe not in this forum, but if there's a better place for it, but just knowing that there are different kinds of approaches and I guess policies per community, per foundation, however you want to draw the line. Um, and I think it's just, I would love to better understand where the nuances are. Um, just I think there, there isn't necessarily a standard approach to doing these sorts of things, um, either yeah. from an ethical practice or just generally, what is the best way to better understand the demographics of your population um, in, in the open source context? So I would love to hear more about what you've learned from that experience. You can speak a little bit to that and I think now seems like a reasonable place to do it. So the question that we were getting kind of very particularly on the reviews was the displaying of demographic information. So we were asking the events to provide a link to how their demographic information was displayed. Uh, but the challenge, obviously, for some of the events is they, they don't have it yet. So, so we, we were just kind of having a, a funny spot asking for something that wasn't provided. So we had to work through that just uh, a tiny bit. Um, and then I think some kind of out of band things that started coming up with was, was obviously around like things like GDPR and then the subsequent demographic related questions that can be asked. Um, so maybe doing declarations of um, these are all opt-in questions, right? And some declaration that needs to be made on the website. So I think those were kind of the two things that I had seen through this review process. So one was the display of the demographics. We were a little bit ahead of their ability to answer that question. What we were looking for was something they couldn't necessarily provide at the moment. And then um, probably being more explicit about how that information is being collected. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe harder for discussion, but I'd also be curious in terms of granularity um, that people were willing to go to, like what, because like if at a certain point you want to know more and more, but if that a certain point you've crossed the line, people don't want to share that or they don't want to post that information, then there's sort of a, a middle ground between how specific can we get with some of these questions. Um, and so I feel like knowing what levels are appropriate would also be interesting to note um, from this experience. So that's a that is actually that's a, another really good point. So we haven't had the discussion as to like what is too broad and what is too granular, like what that that kind of sweet spot is. Um, 
but there have been discussions around um, like if you're asking questions about say gender, like what is the, the follow-up questions that people can provide information on? And that's not totally consistent yet across all of the uh, across all of the applications. So that's, I think maybe what I hear from your point is trying to identify what some of that consistency could be. I like that. I mean, I think it also helps us give guidelines too, where you want to learn more, but if you ask too much, then you run the risk that this entirely gets shut down mm -hmm. <laughs> or just like not participated in because it's too invasive. And I, we don't want to be too invasive, but we just want to learn um, so I think there's always some kind of middle ground that's appropriate. Actually, I like that because right now the recommendations around this area, they're a little bit, um, I think, ad hoc reviewer by reviewer in terms of what the recommendations are in this process. And it might make sense in the badging group to kind of come up with something that's a bit more consistent that could be pointed to within the chaos community to recommend to applicants. Um, and it'll be a little bit of a guess, I think, at the start, right? Because we don't know kind of, again, on that continuum where things would lie, but at least um, it could provide some consistent recommendations coming from the application process, which I think is a really good idea. Thank you. Somebody write that down. Yeah. <laughs> Lawrence, I think you had unmuted for a second. Did you want to add anything to that? No, I'm okay. I'll keep quiet. <laughs> well, you don't have to if you have something to add, but if not, that's fine. You don't want me to talk if I don't have anything to say. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Um, any other questions on the badging stuff? I will just, I'll add one thing is that we did a podcast yesterday for, uh, with a couple of people from the Linux Foundation with respect to their um, interest in participating in the badging program. And it was really a lot of fun. So we got a lot of good insight. Um, we were also able to talk about a few things that say they are doing that we are not necessarily asking. So it, it also gave some really good ideas as to some metrics that we might want to think about um, with respect to asking other events. And so those things are um, like explicit sessions around DEI, um, events within a conference that bring together diverse attendees. So our conferences, um, you know, running those events. Um, for in-person, uh, non-binary restrooms, nursing rooms, quiet rooms, like explicit statements about that. Um, we could ask about communication and pronoun stickers which are something we don't currently ask for. Um, and then maybe one of the, the questions that we need to think about as well is not every event is as well resourced, sorry, not every event is as well resourced as other events. So, you know, to ask every event, say for um, like a, a daycare on site, you know, like family friendliness, and that could be an indication of being family friendly, right? Um, not every event can do that. And so I think oh. we need to be conscious of this as well, that certain events are just better resourced than others and can, so I, I don't know how that fits with, with what we're doing. So anyway, these are some of the issues and questions that had come up. Thank you, Matt, for that context. That's really great to hear. And I, I look forward to listening to that podcast. That'll be a good one for sure. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. So we do have other stuff on the list. And um, the next one is something that I actually put on there. Um, it's just been kind of rattling around in my brain that, um, you know, when we are talking about things like community reports and things and um, ways we can serve our community and our users, um, it, you know, sometimes it feels like we're kind of just taking stabs in the dark and we're not super sure what exactly would be the best way to help our community, um, our users. So I thought, you know, we could do a survey, but that seems pretty heavy handed. And I, I was thinking, I just wanted to get everyone's opinion on what do you think about just doing a super lightweight Twitter poll of like, hey, how can we best serve you? 
Like what, what is, what is uh, top of mind for you? Something like that. And maybe um, directed to different segments of our community um, have a little bit of different answers. I know Twitter polls are not the best, <laughs> like they're not technically uh, amazing as far as, you know, like data collection goes, but um, just looking for some kind of, or if there's other suggestions on how we could get this information and get some feedback, um, just in a super lightweight way. So I just want to throw that out there. What do you all think? Hi, this is Lucas, uh, and hello to everybody. Um, I think that um, I, I like the idea, um, but I think that the wording of the question is kind of focused on chaos and um, less about the benefits to the um, community. Uh, and maybe the question could be reworded um, on, uh, <laughs> I guess the second part that you already put out there, things I need help with in my open source community, the sort of development my community needs and keeping uh, and staying light on the chaos part of that. I, um, I've had pretty good experiences with Twitter polls, um, but they need to be short and the differences need to be um, really clear. Um, and in my experience, you know the answer is within about 20 or 30 people. You, and it takes very little data to get meaningful results. Plus, plus, plus one on the language change. <clears throat> Where was this language change? I'm sorry, I was kind of like taking notes somewhere else and I didn't quite. Uh, th this is in the uh, meetings in the item number two. Yeah, minutes, item I'm number. Sorry. Is it just like this one? A, point A, how can chaos best help you? Yeah, correct. Okay. Yeah, they're saying they like the second half of that better. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, in, in terms of a tool, um, I mean, I, I find that Google Forms is probably a good one to use. Um, data collection is easier. Um, I mean, Twitter poll, I mean, we can, we can still tweet it, like go to this link to fill out a survey. Uh, but I mean, I haven't really done a poll on Twitter, but I find Google Forms to be pretty, pretty easy to set up data collection is easier and then it's relatively easy for people to fill it out. You don't feel like you need to be on the phone with Twitter, but that's just my personal preference. I, but I don't know if others have other opinions. I, I think the bigger issue is, is this a chaos poll or is this a, something else? Because the, is the first half versus the second half of the question is a totally different animal, totally different thing. Is this for chaos? That's that's what I, I thought. That's what it should be. If it's not, then it's not really worth doing a poll. What does the open source community need? That's not what I think this should be about. That's a survey. That's a totally different thing. Why do we we don't need to do quick polls about what the open source community needs? That's I don't think that's relevant here. My opinion. Um, I, I suppose I would suggest that uh, knowing what the open source community needs is helpful for understanding what we want to measure and what the open source community wants to measure, which is what our prime directive is to use uh, Star Wars language. Uh, we, do we Star Trek we language that already? Perhaps, why, yeah. why do we need to do another poll to do that? I could give you information we have what and is it sorry i'm just saying yeah. that's the i'm just trying to um yeah i think uh, sean to your to your point sean sorry lawrence um i think that is a valid question that's actually different than what I was thinking of when I was thinking of is just like, how can we help them use the metrics we already have and not, not necessarily new metrics, but I think that is actually a, a awesome, a, an awesome idea too. Mm. Like, I think we do need to survey and figure out like what metrics are we not measuring or what haven't we thought of yet. Um, but in this particular case, I was just looking to see like, what, how can we best help our community, our users um, get to the information, use the information, like what, how can we help them? How can we, you know, satisfy our customers if they were customers? Does that make sense? 
Yeah, so the, it does. Sean, did you have a comment? Yeah, no, I, I, I think Elizabeth expressed it well. What I see in I through VI um, is kind of, it looks like you're asking questions about the process. So, well, cause like help me gather data about my community. First, I need to collect the data, help me understand the data that I have collected, help me answer questions from that data, help me use that data to grow my community. Like it sort of seems like it's a series of steps that people might be having problems with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's more of like what deliverable can we provide that will help them along their journey? So like if they're having if they're having trouble collecting the data, then OK, let's make some more guides about how to use Augur, how to use Grimoire Lab, how to get that data out. Mm -hmm. If they're having trouble like understanding, they have they have no problem getting the data, but they just don't really know what to do with it. Then let's provide more guides or, or yeah. uh, some you know tools on like actually analyzing the data and how it applies. So yeah. things like that. I'm just I feel like we don't really have a good feel for where their their pain points are and where they're struggling and how we can like make that make the whole um, use of metrics, no matter what piece of it, make it just easier for them to, to digest yeah. and to use. Um, I think that um, I, I really like the direction of the research. And I like the sort of data oriented way of uh, doing prioritization and understanding what to focus on. And I want to put an idea out there as one possible alternative, just one. And that is um, user interviews that in a relatively unstructured format, but where these are the topics of the interview. Would that uh, not, like I think part of what Elizabeth, what the goal was here is to, with a Twitter poll, it's just like, it takes like a second to send it out <laughs> and just yeah. to get some orientation. Yeah. So this is not, I don't think this is an extremely scientific study. By the it's nature just to, of the sampling, yeah. <laughs> I think it's just to get some, some bearings and then to your point, Lucas, I mean, some more detailed interview questions could really reveal some, you know, like if the answer is help me gather data about my community, that's a pretty broad answer. Right, but an interview could help really reveal like what the challenge is in this particular spot. And so maybe this could even orient for the, a deeper dive on one particular area. Yeah, I would agree with that 100%. I totally see your point. So I like it. I don't think there's a harm in doing it. I don't. Um, yeah, I, I don't see harm. They're pretty cheap to do. Like 20 bucks goes pretty far. Do they cost money? I thought they were free. <laughs> uh, oh, I see what you mean. Oh, yeah. If you use it, but you, oh, so let me just say you probably want to use an ad. Uh, un unless your follows are insanely high. Just... Yeah, they, they are not, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe we can get the community to, to blast it out for us or retweet it or something. I don't know. So maybe I could rephrase that question like in the chaos project. I mean, this is not a great wording. We care about, you know, community health and then we could lead into the second part which is like so it's like we care about this you know but so could you tell us where it might also if we are going to do this it would behoove us to provide an option for a follow-up or I think kind of connecting the back channel conversation with this one of not 
we're not really sure who to reach out to because we don't have a great visibility on our users or people that are new to the project or trying to use the project as a new user. So the poll right. is a way to just kind of get some kind of information, even if it's pretty basic. But if it's also, if this goes out to three people and one of them says, hey, I'd love to talk to you about this more, then we've just found someone <laughs> organically. Yeah, Maybe yeah. nothing will come out of it, but like it would feel like a missed opportunity if we didn't provide some mechanism for follow-up where they could opt in to either share their email or say like, I would be open to having a conversation or something like that. It, we do a Twitter poll. It's very easy to take that Twitter poll, take the same questions, put them into a Google form and redo that as another survey that we can collect more information on, including an email address, uh, just to redo it. It's, again, it's not scientific. We get, get one objective of getting a quick result and another way to get feedback from a larger community that we could email to people for all the people who are using Mastodon that don't use Twitter, et cetera, et cetera. And we'd look really good to be able to go to that larger community that are anti-Twitter, for example. In a Twitter poll, do you ask people if they can be contacted? I mean, I don't, how does the data show up? I don't even know. I, I don't even know. No. <laughs> I've never done one. Poll on the tweet. Say that again. I think it shows up just like a live poll. Okay. And so that's like the, the end of all information. Yeah. Okay. I mean, in theory, they could like reply to the Yeah. Or just say like to reply the to the if you're interested in talking to anyone from chaos. Yeah. Because gotcha. then, then it's like a self-volunteered reach out versus. Right, right, right. Got you. And maybe we get nothing, but if we get one, I think it's a success. <laughs> Very low. Right. right, for the cost of doing this and then even just one person. Yeah, that was kind of my feeling. Like if it's free and it's easy, then at least we have something to kind of go from there. Cause I don't think we have much really information right now, so. How many questions are you thinking to make on the, the polling on Twitter? Not many, maybe like five, four or five. Yeah, I think in Twitter, it's very straightforward. You just go like creating a new tweet and you select the, the, horizon, the horizontal bars. That's the polling uh, option. Then you can add the questions and the polling link. It's very trivial. Then you just write the questions and the option and the post. Okay. Yeah. Well, we uh, are we in a position to provide understanding and interpretation of of data from these projects? So it doesn't it doesn't seem like something we've we've done a lot of in the past, you know, we, we define metrics and we, we figure out ways to collect the metrics, but uh, interpretation and understanding those metrics in context, we usually leave up to the, the projects, right? Or the yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we don't, we don't. Uh, so do, do yes. these questions, do these questions imply that we, we can help with the interpretation and the understanding? I mean, I, I think I would just be interested to know, like if that's the piece that's missing, then maybe that's something we help, like, I don't know, maybe that's something we look at. I don't know. It's at least, it, I just really wanna know where, where their stumbling blocks are. So if that's a stumbling block, then I would be interested in that. Maybe, maybe to Lucas's point earlier, we, we kind of tweak these questions a little bit so that the, the help me part isn't in there because the, it does, the, the implication for me is that we can, we can help them with that, even though we're just asking, you know, what are you interested in? So if, if, if gathering data in the community is their pain point, I'd, I'd like to know that uh, without, uh, without implying that we could help them with that, for example. Does that make sense? Yeah, it absolutely does. That, I just changed that first one as an example. Yeah, perfect. Okay, well, it sounds like there's no reason not to do this. So it'll be curious to see what we get. And if you're following chaos on Twitter, you can retweet it. 
um, you may, hopefully I don't mess it up. So <laughs> hopefully it's, it's like right when I, when I do it. So yeah, just keep an eye out on the chaos Twitter. And if you see something messed up, let me know, <laughs> tweet at me, <laughs> Elizabeth N uh, and I will fix it. So thank you everyone for your input. That was greatly appreciated. I would like to make appreciated. one comment on a chat that Lauren or a message that Lawrence put into the chat. Lawrence, this point is super well taken. The, and this is actually, I kind of forget when we talked about this, maybe in last week's community call to um, just about like the audience. I think a lot of times in the chaos project, we do kind of communicate with organizations who are pretty well along in, in the IT space and thinking about engaging with open source and what that means for their organization. I do think there are a lot of a lot of organizations that are very new to the open source environment, just period. And trying to, I don't know if this is your point, but I, I do think there's kind of a whole range of, of different organizations that, um, that could think about community health and, and where they are kind of in their own learning journey about open source is highly variable. And that could have an impact on, on how they think about community health. So to that point, should we do different, I mean, this sounds, seems like it would be too complicated, but to do a Twitter poll for every segment? I think it's okay for now. I, I just, okay. I think this is a point that we probably shouldn't drop, like not for this, but just yeah. kind of. Yes, in general, just keep in mind that we have the gamut of people. So yeah, that's a very good point. Okay. Again, thank you everyone. Um, we will go ahead and move on. We got about 20 minutes left. Um, so the next one is, oh, I put this one in here too. So I just want to apologize um, because I did not get the newsletter out yesterday. It will go out today. So sorry, I know you're all just waiting at your inboxes for the newsletter. So you're gonna have to wait a little longer because I didn't do it. So I'm so sorry about that. Um, I have no excuse except for I just didn't get it done. So sorry, uh, okay. So we're moving along quickly to the Google season of Docs. Uh, sadly, Chaos was not selected this year, um, but we will try again next year and hopefully get in. So any other comments on that, Matt G? I think you probably dropped that in there, but. No, I mean, thank you for everybody for even bringing the proposal together. And that was great. It was, it was nice to think about kind of the different areas that we can focus on from a Docs perspective. So that was, an, uh, nice process unto itself. Yeah, and I think that absolutely had value uh, in just us, you know, kind of looking at, like you said, um, nailing down some of the areas that we want to focus on now and in the future. So it was absolutely not wasted time at all. It was it was a good a good exercise. So we'll try next year. Yeah. Um, next one is Google Summer of Code. We are currently doing the evaluations of the proposals that were sent in. So that's just kind of where that that is. I'm not sure. I don't remember now the date where we announce. It's soon, though. John, do you so know off the top of your head? I don't. Or it's like May. It's early May, like May 3rd, I want to say. Yeah, so we the next step for us is to to kind of based on the projects that are available and the candidates that had applied to the different projects, we then go back into the system and put our request in for the number of slots that we would like, and then we're allocated the slots. And then, you know, if we ask for four and four are allocated, then it's a pretty easy one-to-one -one mapping. But if it's, we request four and two are allocated, there's a little bit more discussion that needs to be done yeah. on our end. Correct. Historically, we've gotten pretty close to the number we requested. So. Yeah. Yep. Any questions, comments? Word up. We will move along. Um, there is, there will be a chaos board meeting. I think it's on May 4th, if I recall. Is that right? I put April question mark, so 
No, it was, it was I, definitely I, I, May. May. It was May, May something. Okay. Fourth sounds, it was, it was either third or the fourth. I think the fourth sounds right. And Nicole had to drop. So um, we can double check. I think I think it's been scheduled. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it has we as check well. We, should, so I just put, we can double check. But I just wanted to put that out there. If, if there's anybody on this call that thinks that there's something that needs to be brought to the board that you are not feeling like you're having resolved in these community meetings or in your work group meetings or I think there needs to be a fundamental shift in the way that chaos functions or something like that. And again, you don't feel like you're having the, the ability to do that here. You can reach out to um, Nicole or Georg or Elizabeth or me, I guess. But, you know, just reach out. That's cool. I don't think so, Ray. Yeah, I don't think yet. All right, cool. Thanks. Let me delete that then. Okay, we are at the end of the agenda. So what else do we want to talk about? We have a few minutes left. What else is on your all's minds? Or things that were talked about weeks ago you, that we had action items on? I did not copy and paste. I could have probably missed stuff, so. Salona's got a busy day. Salona's so cranking out the okay. CFPs today. I have to write five freaking CFPs today. <laughs> I feel like you could just copy and paste, right? Like just do one and just like. They all want different in. things. You know, so I've got to like have creative juices on. It just sucks. Uh, I mean, it's cool, have... cool, right? Maybe I get some speaking gigs out of it. Yay. But it's like, oh my God, five CFPs. Oh. I did have one, sorry, I'm looking something up. Um, I was gonna show the user stories. Oh my gosh, I was just thinking about that. That's crazy, get out of my head, that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so just so people know, we had talked about this, about, uh, I'm gonna just paste it in here. So this was, I just had been putting some of these together. And it's, it was really, this is not perfect. And so, um, well, Sophia, maybe the structure will make yours actually closer to being done because <laughs> there's not a lot, there's not a ton in here. So I'm just, all, all that I was trying to do here is that you have, you know, you'd like to understand something about inclusiveness with the community that you're considering interacting with. And then I just went out to the chaos, like the metrics page, you know, that we have that lists all the metrics. And again, totally not perfect, but like, here are some things that you could consider when wanting to get a better understanding about inclusiveness with respect to your project. So we have, so it's, it's a way of signaling to people, listen, we have these metrics individually, maybe they're not great, but collectively they can start shedding some insight on the thing that you're looking for. Does that make sense? Is this totally not the direction you were going, Sophia? I'm concerned that I, that what I've shown here is like opposite of what you were doing. trying to remember what we were talking about when we discussed this last. <laughs> Too much time has passed. <laughs> I wrote another one. I'll pull it out for risk. It was, was this based on a specific conversation or is this just you were trying to outline? What this was, was just me. Uh, like just, I think I wrote this like five minutes before the DEI meeting, mm -hmm. you know, just to kind of get it down. So here is the, and some are a little bit. Are you different. basically saying that you think that it's useful to have specific user stories to 
complement the data points that we're collecting? So the so in the so maybe this is what you're talking about. Um, so when we have the big chaos metrics list, we have it's chaos.community slash metrics, right? And we just have a big list of maybe 65 metrics. And sometimes those metrics can be pretty overwhelming to people just because they're kind of one-off metrics. They're, they're focused, they're organized by focus areas. But the idea here is that we could begin to draw the metrics together in a meaningful way that would help people answer or gain insight on particular issues that they care about. So does that, is that what you were talking about, Lawrence? That matters to me and that in the context of doing calls for proposals and doing speaking, that's, that's where I thought you were going in terms of why this would matter in this context of the conversation is that if you have a user stories, if there's a set of user stories that could be reused again and again and again, that's helpful. So that is, yes, that's the hope that they can yeah. be approached over and over and over again. And actually this was where we had the conversation. Sophia, are you trying to say something? Am I, do I keep cutting you off? <laughs> no, yeah, I just trying to think how, how best to interject it without derailing where it's going. Um, more, I guess, I'm thinking about in the risk working group, there was one, one of our early dependency discussions, we outlined all the different kinds of rules and how they, how this information was important to them. Um, mm -hmm. And maybe that's too comprehensive for something like this, but I feel like we had a couple of like very actionable connections between mm -hmm. why someone who say works at a company is, needs to know about Alliance licensing and compliance so you don't get sued like there's a very strong connection between monitoring something like this and you successfully functioning in your role um, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. just saying like general user story I think what we had outlined in terms of different kinds of users and how subsets of those metrics were more or less applied applicable to those kinds of users and decision makers. Um, like there was an interesting one about funding and those that are trying to better understand which projects to fund um, might, might yes. look at it from a different angle in terms of say project interdependencies and overlaps where are the concentrations of dependencies happening in inside ecosystems or inside groups of projects that they need to make sure that they're funding and supporting because a lot of people use them or things like that where mm -hmm. the same metrics are now not to say flipped, but the context around them has changed. And so I think if the goal is to help people understand how to apply context to the metrics that we have, then I think showing examples of those connections between how this can apply to different roles, functions, and goals, then I, ideally it's, it kind of will help the light bulb turn on, um, or at least help people think about how, not that everything in this list is gonna be applicable to them, but some things might be for whatever they're trying to achieve. I uh, I think user stories and use cases are are incredibly helpful, uh, but I, but I don't necessarily. This doesn't feel like a user story or a use case. This feels more like kind of categorization of metrics that can help solve a general area of concern or or give information on a general area. So it's not it's not so much a user story or a use case. More more of a categorization, which. Yeah. which I like because what we we need that for the the metrics because right now we just we just look at them by working group uh, but the I think I get caught up on the the user story part because this doesn't feel like a user story yeah well now I'm remembering why how we got here is because we were talking a lot about creating users like specific user stories in terms of a person a context and story um but we thought that we might want to do a little bit more just sort of pre-work to help mm -hmm. work i mean maybe this is like jumping ahead of ourselves maybe we should start with the end user and see how they're pulling these things together because i think having those kinds of stories can be very powerful and provide guidance for others that are just doing similar things but i think ideally that's going to yield some natural grouping and organization that can be applied to how people 
view the website. Like say I'm a community lead and these are things I'm in, like are important to me. And then that will filter for them what metrics we think are most relevant to that use case. Mm -hmm. Where right now, again, because it's organized by working group, that's less intuitive if you don't really know why these things are grouped that way. Like it's, it's grouped around the function of our project, not the function and goals of a person. I, the biggest, my biggest issue is that again, it's the people, the use case, they don't know what the use case is. The majority of people that we think that's going to benefit are people who don't really know what they really want, need. They, it's, they're not aware of what they're actually going to need. You have to educate them in some ways. Um, and the example is in terms of like, in use case that's not that we don't usually don't care about is the investors that keep on trying to create indexes of what the most popular projects are. <laughs> and I, every time I'm like, I just we just created this awesome index of the most popular projects and what which companies are going to benefit. I'm like, why you just did we, why did you just redo the what we try to recreate the wheel? We've been doing this for 15, 10 years already. Why don't you just look at X Y Z? It's I don't know if actually interviewing people might, for a use case might be the best approach for that. So I'm, we had, we've kind of had this discussion, I think in a variety of ways. I am certainly not um, like in love with the term user story or a use case. I mean, I'm open to to anything that is a better title. I don't particularly care, that's fine. I guess mine was just kind of the heart of the ABC here, right? Just trying to orient people as to, to what might be helpful, the beginning, the middle, the end. Again, the story could be wrong here, but um, so I don't, if you, if you have some creative thought on what we could call these, that would be they're, cool. They're almost metric consuming contexts. That is not <laughs> a smooth <laughs> metric consuming context story. Plus, plus one to that. I mean, it, plus, <laughs> one to it, plus one to it sucking. <laughs> That's what I think I'm hearing. <laughs> like, too many words, Sean, shorten it. Get into marketing, dude. <laughs> I, I really like whatever we end up deciding to call these. I really like the idea of here's the thing that this person, whoever they are, they could be anyone um, wants to try to understand because like uh, for the, for the initial one here, the inclusiveness metric, for instance, you're trying to understand the inclusiveness of a community that you're considering interacting with. So either you're a contributor or you're a, a company or your, you know, an, a maintainer, maybe the maintainer wants to understand the inclusiveness of their own company. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of people that care about this, this thing, this context. And so um, I like the way that we just kind of have the question um, or have the, the goal or what, however we want to say it. And then there's like, here's the, regardless of what your working group they're in, here are the metrics we care about. And this is what you'll get at the end of this. So it's, it's, it is like a story, but like, it, it, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but I just like the idea of not, not targeting one particular person by let and letting it be a little more organic, I guess, is the, is the thing I'm trying to say. I think, uh, I think organizing, organizing and displaying the metrics in this way also provide a platform uh, for future work where we actually could build user stories and interview uh community managers on these on these lists for example we could we can point them at these are the ex inclusiveness metrics that we that we've identified what do these metrics mean to you uh, how do you use them you know what do they tell you about your project so it would it creates a platform where we can then go and create these more in-depth user stories and we can also uh, interview and, and talk to uh, people using them and and, and find out how they're being used in, in context. Uh, so it's it's a great beginning platform. So I, I like it, whatever it's called. Uh, uh, 
but I would like to detach it from user story. <laughs> we get a good name. Sean is on it right now. I yeah. just did yeah. uh, math. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if uh, you guys already talked about the cultural structure and the code base uh, dimension of inclusion, because that is where most of the traditional structures really had a kind of paradigm that were not very inclusive. For example, yeah. you hear this structure of the master slave, which has been challenged. The yeah, testing, which is people that, used yeah. to, people used to call about the black box testing and the white box testing, giving labels that are very controversial and things like that. And also in naming of variables in our source code, a lot of naming convection have really been exclusive. So we could also capture this kind mm -hmm. of things, which are the hands-on implications. And it starts translating in documentation and high-level structures. Yep. So I really think we could represent those as well. Yeah, and I don't, so I point well taken. We don't have uh, metrics around that right now, but that would certainly be something that we could um, move, work on. And have them then be included in these metric consuming contexts. <laughs> does that make sense, Armstrong? Yeah, it does. Cool, thank you for that. We are about at time. So um, if you have other thoughts on this, marinate them until next week or email all of them to Matt G because he will take all of them. <laughs> um, anyway, I hope you all have an okay day and we will see you next week. Yeah. We're going to have a na naming contest on this next week. That's right. Yeah, you get right. a prize if you win. <laughs> all right. We actually should do that. Oh, that's actually a really good idea to do that like in the newsletter or something. And we vote right. on the winner and then they get a t-shirt or something. A sweatshirt, know. yeah, we can do that. Is there awesome. chaos swag? Does that exist? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have t-shirts, we have sweatshirts, I have beanie hats, stickers. Are you implying something, Sophia? <laughs> <laughs> how, come no, how come no one has given Sophia swag? I'll just I'll just say never met we haven't met Sophia in person, strangely enough. No, I only exist in this small cube of an apartment. Yeah, you know sure. what? We're getting we're getting some sweatshirts, Sophia, and I will happily send you a sweatshirt. <laughs> It'd be nice to represent someone other than my company. That is easily done. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll see everybody next week. Have a good one. Right. Take care. See you next week. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone. Sean, thank you for all your work. Oh, no. I, I, if I contradict you, it's not. No, I didn't feel contradicted. I felt you were expressing a really valid opinion. So okay. was, um, was, I, 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 I know you do a lot of stuff that I'm not in the meetings, I'm not in. No, 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 it's, a, no, it's, um, and I have a particular perspective that is not always right. And I, I didn't think I understood, I don't think I understood the whole survey no, completely no. at the start, which is why I sort of was quiet later on. So, no. uh, basically, I, yeah, I just know that you're the basically, I'm you're just the person guy, I want just who the basically dude. keeps the, everything running. Um, I'm one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know you're, that's all the stuff, but you're, I, I'll talk to you soon. In, yeah, uh, yeah, same uh, here, Lawrence. I'm looking forward to talking soon. Bye.